There's a lot of just people behaving badly tonight, I think is what kind of sums up the stories tonight. Um, they just should have known better and just didn't uh, didn't want to ought to know. Mm. Yeah, I know. So let us begin. That's not good grammar. That's not good grammar. I don't care. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And tonight. I'm crazy for feeling. I've, I've had issues paying my bills sometimes. Uh, we think we all have at some point or other. And I understand trying to reason with the people doing the bill paying. In fact, I've had some be very nice. I had the, uh, amazingly enough, Comcast, the people at the Comcast office appreciated that my dad died at the beginning of June, not the end, so they gave me back his, the, wow. the bill, the, they didn't charge me. It must have been somebody new, because I think they have, like, a mandatory soul removal for a Comcast. So, you know, sometimes it's, it's, you know, going in and you handle that stuff, and you deal with some people who are willing to be helpful and, and good, but um, this is probably not how you engender that, um, that behavior with them. Um, this comes to us from uh, Deltona. Um, man gives Deltona cashier envelope with cocaine. Oh. Um, that's just Deltona residents. It's not okay to pay your water bill with cocaine. Jen Horton wrote this story, and I'm betting. Wherever Jen Horton is, she's sitting there going, Jesus Christ, did I actually have to fucking just write that in a serious goddamn news story? <laughs> Holy Christ. Um, employees at the Deltona Water Office on Enterprise Road were evacuated this morning after a customer handed a cashiered envelope with white powder in it. Already we're off to a roaring start. Yeah, because that could be anthrax. At 9.56 a.m., the Water Department employees called the uh, Volusia County Sheriff's Office to check the suspicious substance. Employees were evacuated from the building. Sheriff's Office and hazmat teams both responded. The powder was tested. Interestingly enough, it was crack cocaine. The Sheriff's Office will continue to investigate. Hot confirmed there were surveillance cameras in the Deltona Water Building. You can't make Kool-Aid out of it. <laughs> If that was your thought process on taking it to the water authority. I mean, maybe you can. Maybe you can just dump that shit in water and drink it. Yeah, no, no. I'm. Are we sure? Has anyone tried? I haven't. I've never tried doing cocaine in any format, so I wouldn't know. But maybe you can. Maybe you can make like cocaine Kool-Aid. OK, I I. Not an economist. I don't understand Ben Bernanke. I don't understand the Fed. I don't understand mortgage security crisis. I am not the people from Planet Money. So correct me if I'm wrong. But last when I checked, this is not a cocaine based economy. I don't know, because speaking of Breaking Bad, Jesse totally paid for his gas with meth that one time. Yeah. He I, filled up the fucking RV and paid for it with meth. You don't go to McDonald's and go, yeah, I want a uh, Big Mac value meal. Here's a dime. No, it's it's five dollars. No, no, a dime bag. Oh, OK, that makes sense. I mean, technically, yes, we have moved on from the barter system. <laughs> But to be fair, I mean, our economy's not going so well. Going back to barter might not be the worst thing. Might not, no. Well, no, might. like. But it's a matter I, of what we're what we're bartering. Because do you really want an economy could, based on cocaine? Like I could trade the ADD meds I don't take anyway for the dental work I desperately need. Do Do you really Do you really want? A cocaine based economy because then people would be all actually we would be we'd have a whole lot of job security wouldn't we well anyway I'm not sure it's a bad idea speaking of creative accounting um, at least in this case a creative in a very strange way um, 
Remember that guy from New York? The rent is too damn high. Remember that guy? <laughs> Tried to get elected. Chris well, um, this this guy uh, kind of took that in a different direction. Um, Mansion squatters defense. I am a Moore and I own it. Washington Post. Like calls it, Othello? Like Othello, yes. Washington Post calls it one of the most bizarre burglary cases in the region in years, and it's tough to argue. A 29-year-old man moved into a vacant $6 million mansion and claimed rightful ownership as a Moorish American national. In fact, Lamont Butler argued, literally so, because he defended himself in court, that all of the U.S. really belongs to him and his Moor peers because the continent is still part of a Moroccan empire and thus our modern leases are meaningless. Unfortunately for him and his girlfriend, the jury didn't agree and convicted both on charges of burglary and identity fraud. Um, but there's I feel a little stupid that I didn't know that that was the root of Moors. It's that they were from Morocco. It's yeah, it's still not doesn't make any sense. It's, if that argument was going to work. The Native Americans wouldn't all be living on reservations right now. Yeah, they'd be over here like, yo. Uh, <laughs> Actually, it was ours first. Fuck get in line, y'all. motherfucker. Get your ass in line. Yeah. If that argument was going to work, there's a lot of Native Americans who would be doing pretty well right now. Well, I mean, though, they've, they've made the casino thing work for them in New England anyway, but they wouldn't have had to do that. No. Because they would just own everything if that argument was going to work. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. It's just been revoked. You've never seen Lethal Weapon 2, have you? No. I've never seen any of the Lethal Weapons. Which should surprise no one. <sighs> Just talking about the Roku, which has Netflix, which has Lethal Weapon. Well, you were you were doing the whole thing about Monty Python and the Holy Grail last week, and I've never seen that either. I know it's apparently very good. Oh my God, they're so mad. Burn the witch. That might be a little bit strong. I don't think that's a proportionate response. In, Unless that was a joke from the movie, which I don't get because I haven't seen it. So last I checked, I would love to use this defense for other shit, you know, get get busted for a you know, parking ticket. I'm sorry. I'm a sovereign citizen. I'm I'm you know, you can't can't touch this. Yeah. It's See, the MC Hammer defense. Ireland never conquered shit. Everybody <laughs> conquered us. So it wouldn't really work, even if I tried it. I'd be like, yeah. well, I'm an Irish citizen. Then, and ah, sh- fuck me. <laughs> here's all my land and money. <laughs> just, yeah, just, no, fuck me. Not that we didn't try. It's not like we surrendered. Mm. We just got beat a lot. This is another, yet another, should have known fucking better. And this one kind of irritates me because, Jesus, dude, what, really, what is... It's a teacher. It's a teacher who done fucked up. I... And it's Florida. Of course it's Florida. Oh, God, I might know what this is. and going to be so angry. Pantsless dance teacher charged with lewd conduct. That headline. Uh, You know what? This isn't actually what I thought it was. This is actually not nearly as bad as the one I thought it was. Pantsless dance teacher. Does that mean he is a dance teacher who is pantsless or he teaches pantsless dances? What's the bumper you have? This is how I dance when I'm not wearing any pants. Lakeland choreographer is accused of making some strange moves in his car. Barbara Hijack, you wrote this story. Get the fuck out. Go st- get corner. Go stand in the corner. You go stand in the corner. And you think about what you've done now. 
That be oh, he's the color guard guy. Yeah, that Debbie, explains a lot. Debbie said that Abraham Sebastian Gerald, who had been hired by the Plant City High School Band Booster Club and the choreographer for the band Color Guard, allegedly sat in his car wearing only a gray sleeveless T-shirt while exposing his private parts. Three boys, a 17-year-old, two 14-year-olds, each contacted deputies after being exposed to Gerald's inappropriate behavior. Teens provided a description of Gerald at his car. How much of a description did they provide? Marching band people are weird, man. Like, I was in the color guard in college. And I'm here to tell you, marching band people, I'm quite right in the head. Like, and especially like the guard people. This is not Cirque du Soleil. Put some fucking pants on. Like, yes. <laughs> not not that not to say that marching band people or guard people are bad people. They're lovely people. I was one of them for many, many years. But they're just a little tweet. And this in a way time, that's hard to describe. And this one time at band camp. Um <laughs> Do you remember the CamCon with the bull shooters? Yeah. I the know. Directors? You yes, yes, are the you whole that yes, weekend, yes, Every yes. time I got in the elevator, are you that band camp girl? No. Yeah, and apparently my nieces were just watching the Emmys on DVR tonight and and Allison Hannigan walked on stage and they both said, that looks like Aunt Tara. <laughs> so if Allison Hannigan happens to get hit by a bus, I could totally fill in on how I met your mother, apparently. After tracking down the 27 year old dance instructor, detectives visited him at his home where he confessed to fondling himself while in his car. Charged with two counts of lewd exhibition on a child under 16, second degree felony, and two counts of indecent exposure, first degree misdemeanor. In addition to his choreography work with the Plant City High School Band Booster Club, someone who's padding out their word count, uh, Gerald is also a part time dance instructor at the High School of Dance in Lakeland, the Highland School of Dance in Lakeland. Um, Do you know who he looks like? Who does he look like? Tell me you've seen the movie Bring It On. Actually, no, I haven't. That's an American classic. What about that movie would appeal to me? There's it's hilarious, really. But there's this they hire this like terrible dance instructor to teach them a new machine. And he's just absolutely ridiculous. And he makes them do spirit fingers. And his whole thing is cheerleaders are just like dancers who've gone retarded. <laughs> And that's who this guy kind of reminds me of. Well, except, you know, this guy didn't have any pants. If you knew the character from the movie, <laughs> still work for you. If I mean, it, if you're at a you're at a school in the parking lot of all the places to be without pants, this is probably one of the worst Followed yeah. only by the mouth of an active volcano. I really thought you were going to say the mouth of a miner. No. Mine is worse. Mine is worse. Legally, the miner is worse. Because legally, you can jerk off into a volcano all you want. I we're going to stop that one right there. Put the around. brakes on right there on that line of thought. I'm just saying legally. I just it, I mean, it's probably not going to be pleasant for you. Think that shit through. Did he think no one was going to care? Clearly, he did not think that shit through. No. Speaking of not thinking that shit through. All right. This is I was just talking about the uh, Miss Teen America getting filmed on her webcam. Did you see that Miss Teen USA? Oh, Somebody is. filmed her on her webcam and then tried to blackmail her with naked photos and shit. So she's now like, I'm so paranoid because my webcam's in my computer. Yeah, you know what? You put Files a piece of tape. In the computer. You put a piece of tape over that shit. Oh, okay. That's I'm what gonna... you're supposed. That's what it should have a little built-in shutter thing. It doesn't. It should. It does. so you put a piece of electrical tape over that shit or a post-it note. That works too. It's a Mac. They, you know, as few pieces as possible. They, um, so she but actually went on TV. She, she tried, they're like trying to blackmail her. She's like, fuck you. Went on TV and like, yo, this guy tried to blackmail me and shit. So beware of this shit. So it was kind of, she's kind of cool. I got to give her that. But this is like an, a thing that this voyeur thing that 
I kind of understand, but it goes to really unpleasant places. It, it's like, you know, extrapolated to its logical conclusion. Well, add anything plus the internet, and it's going to go to really unpleasant places. Well, this didn't quite... I mean, the internet it. managed to fuck up My Little Pony. Did you see the My Little Pony butt plugs that the porn star is selling? This is what I'm saying. This is exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the internet can bring anything to a horrible place. I'm not That's gonna, like the internet's superpower. I'm not going to show you pictures of it, but it's a butt plug with a ponytail on the end of it. And just use your imagination. I'm not kidding. That's kind of hilarious, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they have they already had the ring toss. Yeah, just it, they had the butt plug ring toss, which I also thought was kind of clever. Well, this guy didn't quite get to the Internet, but he went far enough. That's for goddamn sure. Um, professor filmed. Yeah, we're oh we're getting to that one. We will get to that one. Trust me. Oh, okay, that, was, good. that was amazing. Um, professor film student upskirt videos. This is the one I was thinking. This is oh. the one you were thinking. Fuck this guy. <laughs> September twenty third, a college professor who used a camera pen to secretly film under the clothing of two students explained to police he was attempting to gather evidence that one of the women quote was not wearing undergarments, which he thought was quote inappropriate. That explanation, however, does not keep cops from arresting Don Samuelson, 65, on a pair of felony video voyeurism counts. Samuelson, who teaches at University of Florida's College of Veterinary Medicine, Florida again, allegedly victimized the two students on four separate occasions. One of the victims, quote, became aware of the video caping as it occurred about three weeks ago. During a subsequent search of Samuelson's office in early in the month, cops recovered the camera, which had an integrated USB thumb drive. In addition to the upskirts video, the camera continued, quote, several other videos of females working in Samuelson's laboratory and or meeting with him in his office. The clip Sammy's been in charge uh, showed, for example, the gap between one woman's chest and the V-neck of her shirt and, quote, upper inner thighs normally concealed by a victim's dress. After reading his Miranda right, Samuelson claimed he was, quote, attempting to gather proof that one of the women was not wearing undergarments in class when asked about the occasion during which he directed camera at students' breasts. Samuelson acknowledged that that activity was inappropriate. Here's the thing. First of all, I don't know why you would go commando in a college class because I don't understand going commando in a skirt where you're going to be sitting any public place. Like, you don't know what else has been there. It's just asking for trouble. But unless this chick was wearing like ridiculously short skirts or no pants or whatever, who fuck cares? Right. It's not your whatever anyone else has wrapped around their genitals. Yeah. As unless long as it's being, not a weapon of some sort. Unless you're being physically assaulted by her nipples. None of your fucking business. Yeah, it's not like it doesn't the, matter. It's not like, like it the jumbly cannons from from you know uh, uh, from fucking Mike Myers. It's not like that. No, it, it, like it might be in poor taste. I've seen many undergarment choices that are in poor taste, and I judge those people silently. What I do not do, what I do not do, is sneak around like a fucking paparazzi slime ball and take pictures of them. And then pretend I'm on some crusade for propriety. And if you gather, all right, here's the thing. Gathering evidence. What court was he taking this to? Naked court? Is this a thing? Dun, dun, dun. The defendant comes in there, saying no, she does not go out without underwear. Dun, dun, dun. The, the, no, the, the, I think that's an actual thing on like the Playboy channel. They have like sex court. Sex court. I'm serious. They have like a court show with like a sexy judge. Maybe it's not on anymore. Uh, wait. You know what I saw today? I saw an ad for a show called Paternity Court and it made me sad. Yeah. Like, this don't guy, we have Maury? I think part of this guy's problem is, is he really bad at making excuses? Really, yeah. really bad at making excuses. Because... You know, like if you're a pervert, just own it. Own that shit, because no one's gonna buy it, man. No, no one is and, going to buy that shit. And now you look like a pervert who's also an idiot. 
And you At know, least you could have been a pervert with a brain. So this one was kind of amazing. And it actually comes to us. I would not have used this story, except it came to me via NP fucking R. Which says a lot. They almost never advertise that way. NP fucking R. You this are. Is you NP. are listening to NP fucking R. National Public Fucking Radio. <laughs> yeah, they don't do they might have a broader audience if they did, if they were like, and now. The moth <sighs> on NP fucking R. This this is one of those things that. Strange, but true. All right. Have you've I don't know if you've ever dealt with someone in your family or, or friends or not who's an alcoholic and they're like, no, I don't drink, but they're sneaking the shit all the time. <clears throat> that's apparently Weirdly, though, I have a large Irish family. No. Well, that, that's apparently a really common occurrence. Yeah. And this well, guy, one of, the, one of the key tenets of alcoholism is hiding your drinking. Well, this this guy was claiming that, no, he wasn't drinking. Everyone thought he was. He wasn't. And you know what? He wasn't. He actually he was telling the truth. He wasn't because um, auto brewery syndrome. This is a real fucking thing. This is a thing. Apparently you can make beer in your gut. Okay. Morgan Walker wrote the story. Shame on you. This medical case gave a whole new meaning to the phrase beer gut. Don't do that. Well, I mean, Don't try to be to fair. Do it's Buzzfeed. No, no, no. This is NPR. I just sent you the link. Oh, OK. I'm looking at the Buzzfeed link. No, no, no. NPR. It's, you know, if it's Buzzfeed. Or, no, no, you know. no. This is NP fucking R. 61 year old man with a history of home brewing stumbled into a Texas emergency room complaining of dizziness. Nurses ran a breathalyzer test, and sure enough, the man's blood alcohol concentration was a whopping 0.37%, or almost five times the legal limit. Just one hitch, the man said he hadn't touched a drop of alcohol that day. He would get drunk out of the blue on a Sunday morning after being at church, or really just any time, uh, said Barbara Cordell, dean of nursing. Uh, his wife was so dismayed, she even, brought, she even bought a breathalyzer. Other medical professors chalked chalk the man's problem to, quote, closet drinking, but Cordell and Dr. Justin McCarthy, a gastroenterologist, I've had to deal with those, in Lubbock, wanted to figure out what was really going on. So the team searched the man belonging to liquor, isolated him for 24 hours. Through the day, he ate carbohydrate-rich foods, and the doctors periodically checked his blood for alcohol. At one point, it rose to 0.12, Eventually, McCarthy and Cordell pinpointed the culprit, an overabundance of brewer's yeast in his gut. According to Cordell and McCarthy, the man's intestinal tract was acting like its own internal brewery. Can you even imagine? Yeah, an infection of, I can't read that, um, some sort of yeast. Uh, when he ate or drank a bunch of starch, a bagel, pasta, or even a soda, the yeast fermented the sugars into ethanol, and he would get drunk. Essentially, he was brewing beer in his own gut. Like... That is simultaneously the coolest and most useless X-Man ever. I'm drunk, man. I can <laughs> become drunk. Your superpower is never going to do the world any good, but you are going to have a bitch in time. And you're a cheap date. That's just got to suck. Because there are Not times really. you don't. Like. Everyone else is spending all their money on beer. You buy a loaf of bread for three ninety nine. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> 12 pack of beer is like $20 loaf of bread $3.99 <laughs> you get the potato bread you can have like vodka beer <laughs> <laughs> okay can he like craft brew in his stomach and shit you know, make his own spiced pumpkin ale yeah <laughs> Make his own, like, I wonder if it turns into different types of beer, depending on what he eats. Like, if he eats, like, pumpernickel, would he get, like, Guinness? 
I, I would. Could, could you imagine just going in for a competition? It's like oh, a brewery competition. It's like okay, so where's your brew? Stick a tap right here. Look. Stick a tap. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know what you have to pull to get a ring. <laughs> oh, nature is cruel. I could go all day. Nature is cruel. Tip your waitress. Try the veal. I don't know. I don't think this is so bad. Like, you put him on Atkins most of the time. And when he wants to party, he just has a bagel. <laughs> There are worse fates. If you're going to have some kind of rare gut infection, it might as well be this one and not one that makes you vomit everything you eat. Our last one tonight. I have often used the the uh, the, the the phrase. Um, we are just we are we, we share 98% of our genetic material with chimpanzees. That means we are 2% away from flinging our own feces. And some people, not even that 2%. If this guy pukes on you, do you get... Sorry, you gotta move on. I just thought about that. Like, does he puke beer? <laughs> that's, that's like... That's like... You know, Inception. We gotta go deeper. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, this is one of those moments where, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. You saw this. You saw it. it's. I can't believe it's a woman. You should have fucking known better, lady. Angry driver admits hurling feces. In the face, in the face of Hoboken police officer. This is written by the aptly named Charles Hack, whose very first line of the story, shit you not, is holy crap. You just did it too. What? Shit you not. Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! Fucking crap. It's contagious. Cops say a 39-year-old woman admitted throwing feces in the face of a Hoboken parking utility officer last week during a shoving match over a parking ticket. Ninth Street resident was issued summonses for harassment and disorderly conduct as a result. Police recall Wednesday uh, on the report of a woman fighting with a parking officer. A large crowd apparently gathered around the two to watch, which is never a good thing. Because on the playground or in real life, there's always an asshole going, fight, 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 yeah. fight. Parking enforcement officer told police uh, she was leaving the HPU offices at City Hall. The woman approached her and began arguing over a parking ticket she had received. Uh, the HPU worker told police she was getting into her boyfriend's car to leave. Her attack and opened the car door and continued the argument. The worker said she was going to call her surface supervisor. The woman threw a substance in the HPU officer's face. It's later confirmed to be feces. Two women began to tussle until witnesses separated them. Hacker told cops she got upset about a parking ticket. She thought she was being targeted because she is Latina. Initially How? denied throwing poop, but later admitted she had done it after scooping the feces up off the ground in a paper cup. Oh, okay. Thank so it wasn't God. Yes. Because I'm like, how does that happen? Like, do you shit yourself in the middle of yelling at this guy and then decide, well, you work with what you got? Hey, you. Oh, better not. Fuck with me. So at least that clears up that aspect of it. Although I still don't. But who's I, feces? <laughs> well, it's likely not a who, but a, you know, an animal or something. It's probably a dog. But still. But I'm to tell you, like, I walked a dog recently in a town where you had to pick up the poop. And I wanted that away from me as quickly as possible. Like, you don't want to be carrying around poop. No. And, okay, like it was a 20 foot walk to the garbage can and I was really unhappy. Not 20 minute, like 20 foot walk to the garbage can. And that was the unhappiest 20 feet I've ever walked okay, because I was holding poop in a bag. Battle fever, J, two girls, one cop. I think we're done here. <laughs> no, I mean, just OK, you said she was targeted for being Latina. Maybe 
crazy idea. Maybe you are targeted because you're the kind of person who would pick up dog crap off the street and take it with you till you find the person who wrote you a ticket and then throw it at them. Maybe that's why you were targeted. Maybe you were targeted because you parked illegally. Last I checked, this was not a part of Latin culture. I know you've got the dancing and you've got, you know, I, you got the Cinco de Mayo and all that. I don't remember. Well, I mean, scooping the dog poop up. That's not part of Latin culture. That's part of crazy culture. I mean, enough tequila and salsa. No, that's that's part of that's part of fucking crazy culture. This is not Latin culture. That's asshole culture. Literally. Look at you on your road on the road to being a real journalist. Uh, it's usually me with the terrible puns. I just want to go on the record as it's usually me with the terrible puns and you scolding me for it. And that's like three in this one story. They weren't. They were on purpose. That's even better. I'm getting I'm getting into your mind. God I'm help infecting me. your little brain. God help me. <laughs> All right. So I guess we learned this week is don't throw poop. No, the, 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 we didn't learn that. We didn't need to learn. I learned that when I was two. It goes yeah. in the potty and it stays there. Yeah. It doesn't come back out again. I used to babysit a kid who had to have his diaper duct taped to him because otherwise he would take his diaper off and paint the walls of his nursery with his poop. Like he would paint little masterpieces. You've so you had to duct tape his diaper on. You've got a story for every occasion. I swear to God. He's a very cute little boy, except for the poop painting habit. We learned that, yes, it is. The children of the atom have arrived. It's just their superpowers aren't really as useful as Colossus or Cyclops. The, we, I the, mean, the world powers aren't going to save the world. The world's first superhero is Duff Man. Yeah, like he's not going to save the world, but that doesn't make it a not awesome power. I mean, let's be honest. If you were given the choice of the superpower to be like someone who is going to be constantly burdened with that, with having to fight supervillains or someone who is going to be fucking tanked forever. Which way are you going? Great power, great responsibility, great party. Actually, if I actually ever had the chance at a superpower, it would be invulnerability, not because you don't have to fight anybody. You just sort of hang out. And you don't have, that's, that's, that's the one I'd go for. I'm just saying. It's the lazy man superpower. You just got to hang, you know. We learned that <laughs> your excuse can actually make shit worse. Just own it. Own, own your stupid. Own your perversion. Don't don't try to explain it away in the dumbest of ways, because which do you want to be known as a pervert or do you want to be known as an idiot pervert? Those are your choices at that point. Yeah, like you're not. You're just compounding the error. Uh, we learn. <laughs> I just, uh, keep your pants on dancing. Don't go dancing with yourself is is probably a good or no if, if you're going to dance with yourself, your dick. No one wants to see your penis yeah. unless they specifically request it. No, generally assume no one wants to see your safe dick. assumption, safe assumption. No one wants to see your penis. We learned that. <laughs> Just because you can come up with some bullshit doesn't mean they're going to take you seriously in court. I'm a moor. I have rights to own this property. Oh, you do? Oh, well, you can go. That's not how it works. I mean, maybe if he <clears throat> strangled his girlfriend in a jealous rage. I mean, watching, watching too much Denny Crane think any sort of bullshit he come up with, the court would go, okay. That's the... 
You are not William Shatner. <laughs> no. You are You're not. also not Johnny Cochran. No. Chewbacca defense. No. And I don't know, did the Moors ever actually claim America? I I don't I don't think there was still the Moors as a culture. Yeah, to my knowledge, there no. was never Maybe that, I'm wrong. I, I don't know my history so good. But I'm, I don't I don't I don't I can't say for sure. If there are any history buffs in the audience, please let us know. But I don't know that the Moors ever actually had a claim over the American continent. And finally, tonight, finally, we've learned that while many things can be traded for goods and services, normally illicit substances isn't one of them. Especially not with public utilities. Yeah. Ooh, the stream just went down, down. No, it didn't. People just like, no, there's a logo on the screen. I know. Hit the button again. It's fine. Oh, okay. It's Sorry. fine. I just I usually don't have the stream on while we're on the air, but this time I have it on and just muted. So that's why. So, yeah, that that was the. Uh, that was the shit. God damn it. You can't stop yourself. Maybe it's because so much of your vernacular involves poop. Yeah. I wonder, what that says about, I wonder what that says about your psyche. I wonder what Freud would have to say about that. Said maybe I should check the people I associate with. My vernacular doesn't... I, I was able to get through that story without making any poop puns. No, but you love laughing to fuck at them. I like laughing at you because you catch yourself making terrible puns and you get so angry. You're like, nah, smash. One day. <laughs>